in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed <laughs>
so listen i want you to trust what you are hearing they are not cunningly devised fables don't allow the devil cheat you and tell you okay let me hear i hope i will no 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 the integrity of god is upon this that you hear and if you will listen to it it will turn you to a sign and a wonder can we pray one more prayer let your word oh god turn me tonight to a sign and a wonder and let my destiny show it let it turn me to a sign and a wonder Turn me to a sign, turn me to a wonder. Turn me tonight to a flame of fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening. God bless you. Please be seated. Now, tonight is very serious and we're back to our series teach us to pray part three please listen tonight listen with your ears listen with your spirit don't be distracted he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say i was very touched hearing the testimony of the precious people that stood in here you see let me tell you our destinies are at the mercy of not only god but the truth we are exposed to are we together now see the one that now ran away he's not going to collect his um his his certificate his what his discharge certificate because when people collect their discharge certificate what happens to them they run mad ah, who is he that said a thing and it comes to pass was that rule not made by a man It says the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night ordinances that came from men and their partnership with the realm of the spirit truth will give you stability truth will take away fear truth will take away uncertainty the Bible admonishes us, Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus, to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. That means the more you grow spiritually, take away error from your life. Take away mistakes. You should be able to master the laws of the spirit. Listen to me. As far as walking in this earth is concerned, to a point by the spirit where most of your life is engaged with understanding and accuracy your lifetime is too small for unnecessary experiments you must trust god to minimize unnecessary experiments work with understanding hallelujah praise the lord teach us to pray part three please do well to get part one and two last week we took a little break to just touch on something and we're back we have done a lot and i would not want to go into all that we need as much time as we can get tonight to do justice to this final part of the series we said in part one that every believer is a king and a priest and that the priestly ministry of believers require prayer are we together we spoke about the fact that the house of god according to scripture is also the house of prayer for all nations and we dealt with the reasons why we should pray we said that prayer must be taught you don't just learn how to pray by praying alone you learn how to pray accurately by having the understanding that sponsors accurate prayer part two matthew chapter six the bible um challenged us according to the words of the disciples they said teach us to pray 
I told you that the disciples were not prayerless people. They were people who prayer did not work for them. Teach us to pray men we have tried, but we used a formula that was not producing the result we desired. Are we together? So it was not an issue of prayerlessness. It was an issue of accuracy in prayer. And we examined Matthew chapter 6, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, to explain what Jesus meant is very powerful. Please get it. Make sure that you listen to it. And now we're at part three and we'll deal with a number of things and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are three things, the course curriculum for tonight, just three subtopics and we're done. Number one, we're going to be looking at dimensions of prayer. We'll be looking at dimensions that prayer captures. Number two, we're going to be looking at the rules of engagement. There are principles in prayer that we must understand. And then number three, we will wrap up as God grants grace with principles of spiritual legislation we need to know how to decree how to enforce how to create realities the creative dimension of prayer how we use prayer to shape things how we use prayer to influence cities how we use prayers to manipulate outcomes praise the Lord and so please listen let your heart be open in Jesus name Psalm 65 verse 2 unto thou that answers prayer shall all flesh come psalm 65 and verse 2 that is our major uh, okay O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come there are not many people that hear prayer we settle that in part one there are many people who are being prayed unto but there is only one who hears prayer please understand you can pray to a stone you can pray to a molten image you can pray to your uncle you can make petitions to all kinds of people but the bible settles the matter of answered prayer oh thou is not a team it's not a committee only god can answer prayer apostle but our fathers in the village pray and answers come it is true they really do not pray they only fraternize with spirits who take advantage of the provisions that are allocated in the realm of the spirit and by it they manipulate possibilities in the earth realm are we together now yes you know idols do not answer prayer because you cannot fellowship with them you know stones and rocks and water and all these things the possibility for fellowship is not there that personification that allows for fellowship is not there and there are spirit entities that are at the back of these things that serve as mediums or the priests that mediate between you and the supposed gods but let me tell you the truth there is only one god that can answer prayer and it is unto that god we are mandated that all flesh should come praise the lord dimensions of prayer <clears throat> there are many of them but we're considering three for this series it is important for us to know the various aspects of our lives that prayer is the key for that captures that prayer captures in as much as it is true that prayer is not the only key but prayer is a very major key and it's important for us to understand the dimensions of prayer in the life of a believer that in performing your priesthood as a believer you must understand the dimensions of prayer number one the first dimension of prayer is for fellowship and growth write it down please Prayer attempts to sponsor the life and the power 
as it relates to fellowship and growth that means when you pray as a believer one dimension of prayer is the prayer that is targeted towards fellowship and growth are we together we grow spiritually primarily by the ministry of prayer and the word primarily there are other auxiliary support systems two of them basically in fact the standard procedure for spiritual growth in scripture is prayer the word fellowship and service this four a believer cannot grow outside of these four provisions maybe you need to write it down so you don't forget believers only grow in this kingdom based on their interaction with these four dimensions generally speaking the ministry of prayer number one the ministry of the word scripture number two the ministry of fellowship whether fellowship with god and fellowship with the brethren corporate fellowship the community lifestyle and then number four service that means you can know as a believer whether you are growing or not by checking whether you are actively engaging in these four dimensions if prayer is not working in your life you are not growing if you are not growing in the understanding of scripture you are not growing number three if you have been around for a long time and there is no part of your christian experience that is dedicated towards service then there is a dimension of growth you are not experiencing and finally fellowship we have fellowship with god and with men if you have fellowship with god alone you are still not growing are we together now yes i was glad when they said unto me come let us go to the house of the lord why am i teaching you all of these things because you see as you begin to grow spiritually it's important for you to not just act out of faith alone but your faith must grow into trust that means you have come to a point where you know the workings you should know why you are growing are we together now they shouldn't just say why are you growing and you say well i'm in koinonia and they feed me well spiritually that is true but that's not accurate enough you should be able to mentor people that means i should be able to hand over a believer that just got born again and i say sam train this person you shouldn't ask me what should i do it's an insult to your training are we together now if someone is handed over to you now and say please um pastor or prophet or brother or whoever you are mentor this person you should not sit down and then you are just lost and wondering okay what do i do now do you pray no 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 no. you already know the boundaries of growth are prayer the word fellowship and service that's it any other thing outside of these four jurisdictions is a total waste of time it will not contribute to your growth are we together yes so we're dealing with the dimension of fellowship and growth we've looked at luke chapter 9 please write i'll give you four scriptures luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the bible says as he prayed jesus now the bible says the fashion of his countenance changed transformation that comes through prayer remember i've taught you here that prayer is primarily a vehicle that attempts to change you not just change things change you it is the changed you that can now change things are we together now prayer changes the believer it changes you by opening your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit it changes you by pruning flesh in you it changes you by opening up doors for more of the anointing of the spirit the bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered number one and his raiment was white two things happen the fashion of his countenance and then his raiment was white and glistering that's glory there are we together now 
1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 2 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The Bible says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Now he's speaking, he's talking about uh, praying in tongues, but then it is still prayer. That speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So you can speak to God, the Bible says. That's fellowship. You speak to God, for no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit. He's praying in his room. He's praying in a church, but the Bible says he's in the spirit. And that in that spirit, he's speaking mysteries unto God. Verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, does what? Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. Growth. You grow. It's an architectural word. Edifice. That means that you are growing. The foundation has been laid, which is Christ now the superstructure is being lifted so that is important for you to understand you neglect prayer you ignore prayer you will not grow you don't grow by inheritance you grow by engaging the forces allocated for the growth of the saints are we together jude 1 jude has only one chapter verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved are we together building up yourselves building what building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying so you build yourself when you pray the first dimension of prayer is as a vehicle and a tool for fellowship and growth building up yourselves on your most holy faith that means look at me if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today is because your prayer life is not growing are we together the mountain of yesterday that made me cry should not make me cry today again listen let me tell you you know that a believer is growing in the spirit when you get to a point where you can say like the psalmist the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of the same thing cannot continue to buffet you no three years ago you were three hours away from paying your rent and you were perturbed you were you were confused and scattered and disorganized three years later you should have seen god's faithfulness enough and grown spiritually to not allow the same issue make you afraid again are we together yes. you should not fear the same thing twice once is enough growth should take you out of the realm where that kind of fear should come he said do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil he didn't say there will not be evil it is there but i will not be afraid of it Evil does not have to be absent from your life for you to be free of fear. I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Not for the evil has gone. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Two of them are sticks, but they don't do the same thing. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise the Lord. Now, first john chapter one we'll read from verse one to five or maybe just one to um yeah let's look at one to five apostle john is remember apostle john is god's beloved that was the man that understood fellowship he was the one who would lean on the chest of jesus to hear well what he was saying john was the one person who showed us the he showed us a glimpse of the power and victory over death theologically speaking he was banished to an isle called patmos on account of his testimony for christ and this man was thrown in boiling oil and he would not fry are we together they brought him out and did not know what to do with him and they banished him in that island and that was where he got the revelation of the book of revelation praise the lord so now every time john is teaching us on fellowship it's important to listen 
because he truly is the apostle of love and one who understood fellowship did you know that in all of the gospel it was the book of john that taught us on the ministry of the holy spirit extensively all other synoptics did not talk a eh, so much in fact it was matthew just spoke once or twice it was even mark that spoke a little about it luke gave us accounts of it was very detailed but for some reason these guys skipped the holy ghost but not john from 14 down to 16 john was detailing the ministry of the holy spirit are we together that which was from the beginning you notice that john always starts from the beginning i like john he teaches from the beginning john 1 verse 1 in the beginning first john 1 verse 1 the beginning again that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life verse 2 we're reading to 5 for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father was manifest unto us uh-huh three that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that we that ye also may have what fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is you are fellowshipping with us but don't be deceived that we are just flesh our fellowship is with the father this john speaking now and with his son jesus christ so there is a possibility in the priesthood of the believer to use prayer as an instrument of fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son verse 4 and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full the last verse this is then the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him there is no darkness at all fellowship with the light fellowship with the light fellowship with the light as i engage in the word and as i pray i am in the earth realm but the bible says that fellowship is with the living personality not just scripture fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son hallelujah now look up please many believers think fellowship only starts when visions come many believers think you are not in fellowship when you pray until you see something or hear something or a wind pushes you while you are praying so while people approach prayer for fellowship they continue to be superstitious in their desire they are waiting for gold dust they are waiting for silver dust they are waiting to fall under the anointing they are waiting for just now those things can come those things do come but listen the basis of your confidence is the authority of scripture are we together that it does not matter what happens to my flesh in as much as my understanding interprets it that every time i engage in prayer i am fellowshipping with the father and with the son apostle i finished my prayer i did not feel anything scripture cannot be broken see because if you sit down and you are waiting for visions and experiences and prophecy and word of knowledge alone now let me tell you the truth it is almost impossible for you to have a rich prayer life are we together without one or more of these experiences accompanying intense times of prayer usually they will come they are the things that follow his presence but they are not the basis for believing that he came is someone learning now there are people who have a very strong prophetic inclination they can say in jesus name and they are out of their body it doesn't mean they are prayerful no they are not prayerful it's just that the equipping and the wiring within them towards the prophetic are we together and towards prophetic experiences will give allowance for these interactions so you come now and say in jesus name and while you are praying at a point you get frustrated and stop and say lord show me something now encourage me give me a vision give me a dream there is nowhere in the bible where your growth is tied to 
your seeing things in scripture no your growth is tied to the degree to which you conform to the image and the character of the christ and your growth is tied to the degree listen carefully to which you understand the mysteries of the kingdom that culminates to your walking in dominion are we blessed but then it's important for you to know that one dimension of prayer is a dimension that provides for fellowship and growth many believers do not understand that there is a dimension for fellowship and growth and it is dangerous if you do not know this because that then means that you cannot position your heart by faith to believe and know that i'm fellowshipping with the father most times people think that the moment we go to pray is all about binding it's all about casting are we together and warfare while it is true that these are dimensions captured in prayer they are not the only dimensions if your prayer life is only full of binding and casting then you may be casting demons truly but the richness that comes with that koinonia the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship fellowship hallelujah let's hurry up number two the second dimension of prayer is a dimension of prayer that allows for obtaining promises and making requests take note the first dimension of prayer is for fellowship and growth the second dimension of prayer is obtaining promises and making requests that means that there is a dimension that prayer the role that prayer plays as far as obtaining promises and making requests is concerned hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33 the bible tells us promises can be obtained it can become your own hallelujah who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness up Pain promises not just that they were taught it's a popular word many of you who like to play with hebrew and greek words the word obtained is the word katalambano it means to not only possess but to make it your own are we together now obtain promises that means it is and it is true from scripture but i make it my experience obtain promises kabbalakotia the Bible is full of promises, my brothers and my sisters. Genesis to Revelation is full of promises. And that in prayer, men and women can obtain promises. I can take what is written in scripture and make it my experience. That means the fact that it is a promise for you does not mean you have it. Listen, listen, listen. This is where I want you to pay attention to both the things I'm saying and the ones I'm not saying. Because many believers think that just because you find it in scripture and maybe quote it, it's yours. No, sir. Promises are obtained. Obtained to become your own. And upon Mount Zion, he says, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession it is their possession but it's not in their hands yet their possession are we together now obtain promises mark chapter 11 23 and 24 is god helping someone tonight 23 and 24 that means the dimension of prayer that is allocated for obtaining promises and making requests you can make requests mark chapter 11 jesus is teaching here verily verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he had saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said so he's talking about having things making them your physical possession next verse never forget this scripture read with me ready one to read therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire uh-huh when ye pray believe 
that thou receive them and thou shalt have them so you receive and have in prayer you receive and have in prayer you make the truths of scripture your experience when you pray notice what things soever ye desire so it is not wrong to have a desire hello look up please it is not wrong to have a desire now sometimes you would have heard me talk as though i were trivializing the place of prayer to see that the promises of god you know comes to pass in our lives i'm not trivializing it i'm only showing the excellency are we together of having a passion for the kingdom as being above just needs i continue to pray and speak that in and through prayer my needs be met and they are met prayer is very important you can obtain promises and you can grant that requests are granted now let me show you a scripture that will bless you may it bless you in jesus name john 16 and verse 24 jesus is teaching john 16 and 24 ready look up please read one to read he that told ye have asked nothing in my name he said ask comma and ye shall receive why that your joy may be full your joy may be there but it's not yet full so there is something prayer does to your results which will help to make your joy perfected when we pray it is one of the ways that we cause joy to be overflowing and full of glory why because in tendering our petitions before god if and when they are granted we are at peace and our joy is complete god does not just want us to have joy he wants joy like life eternal to be to the fullest are we together ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full one last scripture as i studied this scripture blessed me in no small way apostle james is talking now james chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 james chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 look at what verse 1 says everybody please look up these apostles were really brilliant people we think just because they were not educated they were dull the holy ghost really made them brilliant people we are the ones who don't understand what they are saying look at james from whence cometh wars and fighting this is crisis management apostle james is saying that in any territory the issue of war and fighting and bitterness are we together and all these evil things against brethren will remain he's tracing the root cause why people fight in church why people antagonize one another why did some buy this shoe why did this one buy this is she the only one that can make a hair james is saying there is a root cause to this bitterness this envy are you getting the context now he's saying they come from your lusts that war in your members your desires deep desires next verse verse 2 ye lost and have not that means the reason why most people fight and criticize is the absence of that reality in their own lives james is solving a serious problem here that most times when god blesses others and leaves you the side effect is you will be bitter your bitterness will be routed through different channels through advice through backbiting through a supposed correction but james is speaking by the spirit that most times it is empty people that talk bible we're discussing prayer here are we together don't look at anybody look at me god is talking to us together because i know that when i talk like this there are many people who don't sit down to allow the holy spirit teach them they begin to nod their head in hope that somebody will hear it no no what i say to one i say to all that's scripture let's go back to this it says ye lost and ye have not everybody say have not 
the absence of results and then he says ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain cannot obtain you do not understand the technology that makes promises become real to you to your life and then he says ye fight we're back to his his um introduction now and war yet ye have not and he's saying the reason why you have not is not because your neighbor has is because you do not know how to ask keep that scripture there don't rush verse 3 look at this very carefully it's a healing seminar that james is bringing to the church james is saying i have observed you people believers and i found out that the rate of jealousy the rate of backbiting the rate of talking around is saying the truth is that the foundation for all these things is the absence of the results you talk about in your own life what is there in a crowd what is there in prosperity anointing is not everything of course it is not that when you begin to personalize certain things and create a vendetta around it the bible is saying that is a reflection that you are being paid for the absence of that result come this my lovely lady you two come gentlemen two of you come and stand here clap for them you stand look up do you know for just asking this lady to come and stand here and asking this guy to stand here if you are not careful you are angry already now wait it, i'm not saying you are wicked look up look up look up look up yes i'm, I'm teaching us something here this is prayer wait well, this is a prayer seminar now watch this i asked her to come and stand here notice you started looking at her from head to toe what is special about her the apostle called now it's not because you are evil it's because there is a desire that the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel respected the need to feel appreciated so when somebody is now experiencing something you crave for except god helps you that pain will be there james is solving that problem now come out and stand the lady is happy her thing but notice you are, she does not know you you don't know her but notice if i say you too come and join her you suddenly stop hating her so it was never about hating her it's wanting to also participate politicians criticize people and fight them and they sit in a round table and say you know what this thing we are going to run an all-inclusive government you will also eat from it quietly the whole case is closed i called this lady and i did not call this guy and he's frowning and looking at me now listen she will attack this lady in many ways number one don't distract apostle he's preaching while what he may say is true it is not about distraction distraction is just the scapegoat to help you vent a pain that has nothing to do with the subject matter notice anything i do to this lady now will offend you if i bring out i have some money i hope you are not angry still <laughs> carnality in the house of god watch this how much is this lost the bible has already warned that he that loves the world the love of the father now look up please you see this lady she was sitting quietly she probably did not have a vision that she would receive this amount of money and now remember you prayed in your room and say oh god <laughs> listen i'm teaching you something look up look up look up <laughs> we're still in a prayer seminar i'm showing you listen you see you shall know the truth it's not the truth that is dear that sets free is the truth that is known remember this is not an issue of hatred even you you are surprised that as loving as you are you hate someone else 
it's not that you hate someone else it's the reaction that happens to all flesh that's why the bible says all flesh will pray prayer is a system that helps you to also obtain watch this you prayed in your room oh god let my destiny helper be in koinonia today because this i need support and god is acting as if he didn't hear you and someone who is sitting in front now watch this the various ways you can attack this lady is as follows one is it not just because worship team is sitting in front i came earlier and they took me at the back it, now remember it's not the issue of worship team the foundation the war is this because you believe that if it was you you would have been the person to get it are we together so god gives that uh, hold this 500 dollar, my dear and god gives this guy hold it now watch this they are holding money and this money is your desire this money is your prayer point in fact quite honestly you have a more legitimate need of this money than them it is more painful if they already have money in their pocket i'm using money for a reason are we together now now look at this my darling baby coming to the front some of you can even be angry with this small girl why is she distracting koinonia it's not so much about her it's about you are, are, are we falling now let me ask this lady now and say go and sit down my dear after service see me and let me give you one big hug from this night her shoe was not put correctly from this night her watch was supposed to be at the other side of the hand from this night why did you tie your hair and, and do it like this why did you do uh, this way left or right now notice those variations of pain is not really about her it is about your not obtaining now watch this if i say ushers bring the basket and they bring a basket here and they start to share one one thousand naira you are now colleagues in greatness do you have your own yes do you have your own let's praise the lord together and listen james is saying that is one way to have peace thank you god bless you watch this are we are you getting the point now you see a rich man pass and say look at corrupt wicked nigerians corruption is bad in this country you are right but the motivation has nothing to you don't even know whether that person is god that raised a destiny helper to bless him all this anointing be careful oh young men like this it takes time as far as i know it takes time for the anointing to come and these people are too young to carry this kind of anointing i will not say anything against anybody but just beware you see those kinds of things are statements they are not about listen when you learn this when people try to talk about you you don't be angry you too you understand that james has given you intelligence that these people are struggling too your result has a side effect on your audience we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for us we know we know there's more that's found in you and we will never get We know, we know there's more that's found in you. Verse 3 now. Ye ask. Now look, look at this. All other places in scripture just tell us why we don't have. They say we ask. But James broke it down that there are times you can ask and you will still not receive. So that means there are times you did it correctly and yet you did not get results. And he's telling you why that every time you ask and you do not receive it could be because you ask and miss leave all that english we are going to deal with it and he says that the motivation 
is that you will consume it upon your lust. Please give us amplified. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. We know. There's more that's found in you. Now read it. Ready? One, two, read. Koinonia. Or you do ask God for them and yet fail to receive because you ask with wrong purpose and evil selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it in sensual pleasures. So the Bible says answered prayer is not only based on the faith of the believer but based on God's vetting of what that answer will do with respect to his kingdom that it is possible to act correctly but in God's intelligence he sees that granting you that answer will not make for kingdom come you can lose it it's not a faith problem it's a motif problem in the school of prayer it's not only faith that is important your motif oh god give me power your faith is correct you are fasting you are praying but heaven will not just come to say give him power they will vet your motives why did you want the power why do you still decide lord give me wealth lord give me influence give me a child give me a wife give me a husband and God is looking at your desire. Listen, you ask and you have not. And the Bible says because you ask amiss. Amiss means that your motif has already been corrupted. Are you seeing where the dissipation of energy in prayer for many people is not equal to the results they obtain? They pray for one year. They fast for 40 days. And from the first day of that prayer, their motif was already wrong. Lord, give me a song. You stroll to the bush with a guitar and shout and sing and you don't hear anything. Why? Because you said the last time I went somewhere, they laughed at me. I need to let them know I'm not an anyhow person. That motif already, God says no. If you want a song, so that your songs will be a ladder for nations to hear and to cause the fire of revival to come you will not pray for 40 days i guarantee you make reference to my teaching for your glory please part one and two i think the media would give it to you you can go to our, our download portal koinoniadownload.org and then search for it there and get it for your glory one secret in my life and i will not lie to you i stand by the god of heaven is that most of my desires and my requests are never about i am not the final bus stop to everything i ask god everything i ask god to give me or do in my life i am an usher eventually he's the final bus stop Lord, give me a child. Why? Because I'm a woman. No. Give me a child. Why? Because Penina is laughing at me. No. Give me a child. Why? Because I've been barren for 10 years. No. Lord, give me a child. Why? An opportunity to be able to bring a priest on the earth. God says, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Lord, increase my prayer group. Why? Because my brother's prayer group is expanding. And God says, nonsense. There are more important things to be done. Lord, increase my prayer group. Why? Because people think that I'm not anointed. Lord, increase my church. Why? So that I can show people that even from this village, the whole world can see Jesus. No. It looks like it's a nice prayer point. Lord, I just want people to see you in and through my life. And he says, who is this calling me? There is a language that God cannot resist. Thy kingdom come does not mean to say thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom comes means your life is like a funnel. 
it channels everything into Christ prosperity lifting for the sake of thy house I desire thy prosperity Lord increase my prayer life increase my wealth increase my influence hallelujah praise the Lord are we blessed your intention and your motives so there is prayer that causes people to not receive because they ask amiss and from amplified we see that amiss means wrong motives it means prayer that is born out of selfishness it means prayer that has an unrighteous agenda this leads us to a very interesting um would i say subtopic that i'll just touch a little and then we'll move to something else the will of god write it down prayer is only answered according to scripture when that prayer is within the boundary of the will of god please listen to me very carefully that just because you are praying and you are making petitions remember we're looking at part two the second dimension of prayer that in obtaining promises and in making your petitions the boundary of your answered prayer is the will of god very important john chapter 9 verse 31 the b part and then we'll go to ephesians chapter 5 we'll start from 15 to 17 john chapter 9 god is helping us tonight john chapter 9 now look up please the bible says now we know that god heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Him he heareth. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5. See then that ye walk circumspectly. The word there is accurately not as fools but as wise 16 redeeming the time why because the days are evil next verse let's read together being ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is watch this that means my petitions and my requests are guaranteed to receive an answer when number one they are from a motive that is not fleshly and carnal number two when they are within the coordinates of the word of god and the will of god if i pray a prayer outside of the will of god it will not be answered are we together come again please come thank you watch this let me use my two lovely people let's assume in this example that this is a husband and his dear wife and i'm a prayer warrior what am i and i go to god in prayer and say lord in the name of jesus christ i don't think that this marriage is correct this is my wife and in the mighty name of jesus christ this man something must happen between these two people to give me what belongs to me now the bible says what the lord has joined let no man put asunder is that true and you see that this kind of prayer number one the motif is selfish i'm not thinking about what this man will feel i'm not thinking about what this woman will feel i'm not even thinking about what the children will feel i'm so passionate about my desire to hell with whatever happens to them that kind of prayer is a wasted prayer no matter what is added on top fasting praying seat number two i am praying a prayer that is outside of the will of god now it is true that under certain circumstances you know it can be irreconcilable and these people may get married again and move on like it happened to ruth and naomi with boaz are we together now there are conditions that legitimize marriage again but we are talking in this context a healthy marriage and you are coming now to pray that god will make somebody to live and come to you is number one a selfish prayer it will not be answered there is no kingdom come in that prayer are we together and then number two watch this now 
it is outside of the will of god this is not how god joins people in holy matrimony it is against his character so it's a wasted prayer no matter who supports you in that prayer number two praying a prayer that your father should die so that you will get his inheritance is a stupid prayer it's not only an ungodly prayer are we together yes it is true that if your father passes on to glory of course you know a good man liveth an inheritance but a man who is alive are we together and you are alive too two of you are alive and you are saying god kill one person and allow one person to be alive so that i will get the money it's a wicked prayer that, that's why james said you kill not by using a knife that is that is murder that kind of prayer lord this our father let him go now so that we will rest because you see we do many things in the body of christ that we call prayer god is purifying this experience of prayer is the reason why our prayer lives are unfruitful and it's the reason why when we mentor so many people in the prayer ministry we find out that their lives are ineffective because most prayer points are a derivative of lusts it's amazing the nonsense people pray only god knows how many things i lay hands on here every end of the month and in as much as i prophesy that whatever is here god will, must answer he is going to vet it there are angels who will check yes this is kingdom come this is kingdom come nonsense this is kingdom come this is kingdom come god is not god is not a fool you don't write nonsense and drop it here and then you expect that just because an anointing came upon it no not every dead body came back to life when they touched it you kill because you want to satisfy your lust koinonia let me teach you something please listen to me one of the things that you must pray for not just in prayer alone is oh god kill self in me i don't know how to kneel down and cry you will miss too many things in destiny when your life is all about you and myself hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai Thy kingdom come, thy will be. Hello, him Adonai. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come, thy will be. Hello, him Adonai. Hello, him Adonai. Thy will be. Hello, him Adonai. Make sure that your Christian experience is completely void of self. What is selfishness? The obsession for a thing, a realm, a result, regardless of the effect on the well-being of others. To hell with anybody if I want it. I don't care who dies. I don't care what happens. That's their cup of tea. It is me. It's a dangerous way to live. You will never be a winner that way. Your door remains open for the assaults of darkness when it is all about you and what I want. If it be thy will, <clears throat> nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is selfishness that produces thieves. When you are stealing a man's phone, in your mind, for instance, you are not thinking, this person now, what of the contacts in his phone? Could it be that he's waiting for an alert for a job that will help his family? Could it be the first out of 20 people in the family? You don't care. All I know is phones. Look at the people who steal phones, for instance, not just around here, all around the nation. They can literally carry maybe a knife or an axe or something. Harm somebody, the kind of injury that 200,000 will not solve. 
and carry a phone of 50,000 and sell it for 6,000. That is the epitome of self. What of people who their loved ones die and then they collect inheritance and uncles and aunties say, come and sit down here. I am your father's elder brother, your mother's younger brother. Bring all the money. And then they take peanuts and give the family and sit on their inheritance. Self. What will make a politician carry scholarship for students? Students that some of them are the only ones sponsoring themselves. And he will carry their entire scholarship and put it at the back of his pocket and live with it. Self. The foundation of wickedness is selfishness the foundation of wickedness is self-centeredness that is why the apex the zenith of love is surrender and sacrifice are you learning this now so the bible says to know the will of god thank you thank you my dear let's talk a bit about the will of god now I've done a few teachings about the will of God. We are still discussing the second point, dimension of prayer. The concept of the will of God must be understood for your prayer to be accurate and to be rich. The will of God means many things for many people. I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I've listened to different teachings about the will of God and I've explored, I've studied the Bible myself and I've found out that many things people teach as relating the will of God is wrong. Is wrong two scriptures Colossians 1 verse 9 please it's an anthem here every time we continue for this cause we also Paul is speaking since the day we heard of it do not cease to do what so he's talking of prayer here pray for you and to desire that he be filled with number one the knowledge of his will and then in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so a man can be filled with the knowledge of God's will Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 the last verse and then I teach a bit on the will of God Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 ready and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God what is the will of God the answer was clearly stated in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. What is the will of God? Matthew chapter 6 and 10. Everybody read it. One to read. Thy kingdom come. It's not supposed to be a full stop there. It's actually supposed to be a comma thy kingdom come by thy will being done in the earth as it is in the heavens so what is the will of god the will of god represents every action that causes the kingdom to come and causes christ to be glorified that is the will of god please understand this in the simplest term the will of god is not just what is right because the concept of rightness is relative in our world. The will of God is any activity and any action. Let me define it very well. Number one, inspired of the spirit. Number two, consistent with scripture. Number three, that is able to cause the kingdom, the influence of Christ to come and that Christ be glorified. Whatever activity that revolves within that circumference can be called the will of God. Please understand this. The will of God, number one, inspired of the Spirit. Number two, consistent with the character of Scripture. Number three, is able to cause the influence of heaven to be revealed in a life and within a territory and number four it ultimately glorifies christ whatever does not subscribe to these terms cannot should never be called the will of god this is a very powerful teaching 
are we together the will of god this is the answer whatever has the opportunity to cause the kingdom to come and to cause christ to be glorified and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men The will of God now watch this most of the main teachings have taught about the good will of God the acceptable the perfect will of God and so on and so forth and those things are there but I, I do not think that those are I believe this is my opinion and I, I believe it's consistent from Scripture that there are only two dimensions to the will of God number one I call it the revealed will of God number two I call it the permissible will of God that's all there is and let me let me define it very quickly I hope you are not confused in this lecture remember we are still on point two are we together the second dimension of prayer but now it has necessitated doing a quick course on understanding the will of God the revealed will of God write this down please the revealed will of God is the will of God as revealed primarily from scripture full stop the will of God as as known to man primarily from scripture there is a reason why I say that please follow carefully God will give us intelligence now that the revealed will of God represents the dimension of God's will that has been made known to man primarily from scripture notice i didn't say only from scripture but primarily from scripture there are other auxiliary support systems of obtaining the revealed will of god one is prophecy one is visions one dreams are we together but the degree of error and inaccuracy in all these other methods is the reason why they all submit to scripture i have taught this that the prophecy of scripture is the highest the noblest and most accurate of all prophecies word of knowledge prophecy like the dispensing of that gift or that office and all other spiritual media for obtaining the will of god they work but they have a very high degree of error and the errors are caused by many things there is the error of perception there is the error of reception there is the error of interpretation are we together now there is the error that comes as a result of the low level of renewal in the interpreter all of these things together are a mix and they corrupt the purity of the voice of God through all those channels you are safest when you understand and discern the will of God as revealed from scripture I believe strongly that scripture was written so that it would not be changed if scripture was only recorded in a radio it would have been changed by now scripture was written it is written you hardly change what is written are we together that means when i want to explore the will of god for his program for my life my first area of search is not a dream look up please my first area of search is not apostle joshua selman to prophesy to you my first area of search is scripture and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture that is able to do what to make you wise unto salvation it is very important let me give you an example oh boy an example of the revealed will of god first timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 first timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 everyone please read ready one to read who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth it is God's desire this is a revealed will of God there is no need asking oh God do you want my father to be saved oh God do you want my mother to be saved your prayer is Lord give me the strategy 
for the salvation not whether he will be saved or not asking god whether someone should be saved is not correct because scripture has already opened his will number two asking whether it is god's desire for the saints to do well is not a will that is hidden are we together now yes jeremiah 29 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you say yet the lord thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you an expected end there is the will of god as revealed from scripture this is very important as we prepare to go to the third dimension because you see until you know what the will of god is you will not be able to make certain requests there are things we do as a ministry there are privileges we give to workers there are privileges we give to leaders are we together now it is it is something that has been put on ground the workers the leaders know and based on that knowledge it's not a mystery if they are if the workers are not sure they can go to their heads of department and their executives who help to interpret what has been put down by the ministry as far as their welfare and their provision is concerned are we together now yes for instance in this ministry whatever program we are doing as workers or whatever the moment it is night it is mandatory that under normal circumstances vehicles are around to help alleviate the stress of moving in darkness it's not something that is a special arrangement it is so after this service now there are buses that will be waiting to pick people are we together now now asking apostle do you think that there will be a boss after this service it's unnecessary because that will has been revealed are you getting what i'm saying now the scripture already has the most accurate dimension of god's will his will as revealed in scripture and then demonstrated in christ now listen carefully the bible calls jesus the image of the invisible god and i've taught you here that jesus came as a correction of the perceptions we had about god there were many things we did not know about god there were many things we knew but not properly about god so we look at the life of jesus in his earth work and we learn god by looking at jesus there's no need asking whether god is a god of love we see it in jesus we see how he treated sinners and publicans we see how he treated children we see how he wept at people's funerals so we know that god is love because jesus is was and continues to be loved are we together now god is a giver how do i know that five loaves four loaves little children have you any catch cast your net to the right side his life was full of giving till he gave his life so i know god is a giver so when the bible says he is the reward of them that diligently seek him i trust god because i see that truth of scripture revealed in jesus i know that god is slow to anger and judgment why because jesus was walking with some disciples and they saw some other people and said can we command fire to fall and jesus said do you not know what spirit you are of the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love jesus became a demonstration of that so nobody will come and talk nonsense and tell you how ah, god will kill you tomorrow throw away all that garbage jesus greater than any prophet is a representation of the fact that god is slow to anger let god be true and every man a liar are we together now it is the reason why we edit prophecies based on scripture and based on jesus the christ looking up to jesus he can be looked up to he is the author and the finisher of our faith that means our journey is with reference to the standard he gave us there is nowhere in all the 33 and a half years of jesus that i see him intentionally plotting evil against any so god does not think evil because as seen in the christ it was not there it is true that he judges but god is slow to anger 
So away with that theology that makes it look like God is chasing every man just to destroy you. It's not supposed to be a license for licentiousness. Don't get me wrong. But that it is consoling to know that we are wrapped up in the love of the Father. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed. When Jesus saw people who were, who, who were crying in funerals, he joined them to weep. We do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. You know why I teach you this? Because the days that are coming are coming with too much spirituality and spiritism. If you are not grounded on scripture, many things will confuse you. You will soon not know who God is again. Because there are pseudo actions that look spiritual, but they are not consistent with the Christ. Look up to Jesus, not Apostle Joshua Selman. Look up to Jesus, not a preacher. Paul only said, follow me as I follow Christ. Before you follow me, see who I'm following. Are we together? Let me tell you this. The revelation of God's love in my life has done something to me. When I say God loves me, I really mean it. It's not because of the results. He loves me. I have an understanding with God. Not only see my father. This is not about covenant of ministry and this. God loves me. I hear the chains falling. That's what is happening tonight. Chains from all kinds of teachings. Well-meaning but destructive. The will of God is that all men be saved and all men come into the knowledge of him. It is the reason why in this ministry, for instance, we do not fight our wounded soldiers. We stand for them. If people do things and go down, we are quick to come. You see me preach and it looks like I'm always holding a cane. Yes, I'm holding a cane, but remember thy rod and thy staff. I told you they don't do the same thing. Rod is for correction staff is to draw you you need both if you are a preacher and you have only staff you will see the kind of members you produce if you have only a rod you will also see the kind of members you produce to totally comfort people you need the rod and the staff hallelujah i love people if you are not growing in love you do not know god and the love of christ is not at work in you it doesn't matter what village you come from we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation are we together we have been grafted into that life of love by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you heal the sick not when you preach love i hear the chains falling let fear live your life I hear the chains falling. You cannot serve God in fear. You serve God in reverence. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. One of the most beautiful times in Koinonia here is when. We are done with the service and I have to hug my children. You see all of them come over me. That thing gives me a feeling that I cannot begin to describe. No matter how you look at me and no matter what you are holding, I turn to my children and give them a big hug. They come with their, their wet shirt from fighting over Jews and so I still hug them like that. I love them. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed. The love of God is a very powerful revelation. Many people have exaggerated it. And their lives continue to be shredded into nonsense. They allow the devil to just come. And people have exaggerated the love of the Father to the point that they have covered the issue of hellfire. Hell is still there. Listen to my message last week. Hell is there. Hell is real. Lake of fire is even worse than hell. Many people talk about hell and leave lake of fire. Hell is a spirit. Hell itself will be relocated to the lake of fire. Those who are in hell now have not officially started their judgment. The judgment will officially start when death, hell, the grave will be relocated into the lake of fire. We don't know who is there, but one thing we know is that there are spirits who are there, bound in everlasting chains. 
what I just told you is also love. Use this as a father and see how correct your children will be. When I was in secondary school, before they flog you, they would tell you what you did wrong. You will accept that I did wrong. They will pray for you, then they will flog you. Let's start Koinonia secondary schools. You will see how we we'll train these children. I'm not going to bring this secular, demonic, Babylonian training. Imagine that you flog your child and he knows what he did wrong. Just because you prayed for him does not mean you should not whip him. Foolishness is bound in the, the heart of a child. The rod of correction, not prayer, will drive it far from him. There is a psychological testimony that your child did. I'm only serving what the chef prepared this night <laughs> remember I told you that I'm only a waiter the principal chef is the Holy Spirit and his meals are always balanced and nourishing say amen. amen so there is the revealed will of God number two there is the permissible will of God let me talk about that very quickly what is the permissible will of God now look up please I will say it, then I'll repeat it as you write. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, God's character, and that directly exalt the Christ. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, comma, God's character comma and directly exalt christ now just because it is permissible does not mean it is necessarily not the will of god permissible there does not mean god is managing it look up please there are things in scripture that are not written verbatim there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you will be in zaria now there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you have five children now please look up there are dimensions of god's will that are not stated directly from scripture at that point we use the tools of righteousness we use the tools of god's character and we use the tools of the exaltation of christ as the compass to help us to be able to walk around that will. these three first then in addition prophecies visions and the rest come notice the bible says the kingdom of god is in talk to me righteousness peace and joy never in visions never in prophecy no the kingdom of god is in righteousness that means god's methodology peace joy in the holy ghost now let me tell you this this is the major area where as believers we have suffered a great deal again and again this dimension of understanding the permissible will of god sam has a program in two weeks return to worship now whether or not you had a vision or a dream or god just put it in your heart the truth is that that program if it is done in righteousness are we together if it is done consistent with christ's character and if it will end up glorifying christ it is the will of god that will support the kingdom as powerful as the will revealed in scripture are you getting me now this is where all the other auxiliary things like finding who to marry a job to do there is nowhere in scripture where it is written that pastor alpha marry annie but within the boundary of righteousness if you marry an unbeliever it was not the will of god are we together now but that within the boundary of the will of god you can find a sister that loves god and her life is consistent what is virtue 
Virtue is a reflection of the, your closeness to the character of Christ. So I don't need to see a demonic sister or a devilish brother and ask, is that God's will? No. In Koinonia here, for instance, if you come and meet me and you tell me this girl that you use for example, you like her, for instance, it can be within the boundary of the will of God. If you are a well-behaved brother and you are responsible, are we together? It's my responsibility to vet you based on the will of God. Righteousness, responsibility, love. And I can tell you with all the blessings of God and God will stamp it and endorse it. Are we together? There are very few people on earth who because of their lives, listen carefully, and because of the nature of what they do for the kingdom, God will meticulously place restrictions around everything in their life because the role that they play, someone like me now, you see, almost everything about my life is meticulously guided. Do you know why? The reason is because I carry a burden of a generation and the implication of everything I do is generational but that is not that cannot be a template for you it is the price i have to pay for carrying this anointing there is a maximum number of cars god has told me i may never have it if at all it comes and it's more than that you see god has searched my life and he has he has optimized the things that must be in my life for me to be effective that functioning at your optimal level will require this there are people who functioning at their optimal level will require that they are millionaires not billionaires some it will even require that they are not millionaires at all but it cannot be a template for everybody scripture come this brother now can be trusting god for a job lord should i go to enugu or should i go to lagos it is not written here directly the only thing is that the path of the justice has a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day so these are foundations i can take out time if this brother is given a job right now he needs to look at that job does this job compromise on my work with god are we together will this help me to be responsible if it does then within that this gentleman can safely go on that job now if for any reason that decision he has taken is against destiny god will go out of his way god does not only lead by saying start he leads by saying stop there are times you don't wait for him to say start you move if he keeps quiet he's endorsing you if he says stop you return I, I'm, I'm showing you certain things about the will of god Oh God, should I build a house? God is a God of portions. It's never his will for me to be a tenant for life. So if some money comes, wisdom that is profitable. <laughs> wisdom that is profitable to direct should tell me buy land and start building. If it is not the will of God, God will show me. Are we together? our precious men here have married good and lovely sisters not all of them saw visions some of them just directly in the name of honesty they saw a sister who loved god they came to me and i said god bless you you may be waiting forever for a dream a vision some occult type encounter now listen I'm, I'm telling I'm using this as a point of contact listen my brother let me tell you I'm saying it is not a you can sit down and trust God look at a godly sister God already gave you what virtue is virtue is not just the ability to cook virtue is your closeness to the character of Christ find a godly sister that looks like that when a job 29 man marries a proverbs 
31 women they will give birth to a psalm 112 home are we together there are people today who god already answered them and gave them good jobs but not understanding the concept of the will of god they are waiting for a vision nmpc gave you a job you rejected it because god called you into ministry i'm not saying it's wrong good good things came to you and you threw it away and god said i've tried for you and you are there now wallowing around and being punished for not discerning the will of god say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to see to hear and to discern the will of god you are with a, a man who is smoking and drinking and ungodly and you said i would change him you are not in the will of god let me just tell you straight up this night the ministry of transformation is exclusively the ministry of the holy ghost any man that does not change before marrying you will seldom change he will remain that way and any man who changes just because he wants to marry you has not changed whatever a man does to only you he's not really is not a virtue in him if he's kind to only you he's not kind if he's truly kind he will be kind to everybody kindness will so implicate him even if he tries to lie to come out a lady who washes only your plate is not neat the virtue of thoroughness and excellence must spill out in every area i hear the chains falling hey, i hear the chains falling when god brings a destiny helper that is blessed you don't fight him because you have been taught that all blessings come from god through men to men and if the men don't have what you are looking for you will not have it so it does not make you to look down on others but you pay attention when joseph of arimathea is coming you pay attention when pharaoh is coming oh joseph pay attention when boaz is coming ruth pay attention when ahasuerus is calling for women esther pay attention is how god lifts men god lifts men by bringing those greater than you to lift you it's a technology it's not hidden how does god increase a ministry by anointing them and putting the word so that they minister to people and the people that are built by that word will communicate benevolence the offering you gave is not going to heaven the offering you gave is what will pay boss tomorrow by sounds so it's not a mystery the more i continue to be anointed and i bless you and dispense spiritual value the more this ministry will continue to increase and i will also increase there's no gimmick about it so if you are poor and your pews are empty the problem is the value not just demons the knowledge of god's will will help us to stop talking a lot of nonsense bishop oyedeko says every man's calling is a high calling nobody has a low calling everybody's calling is a high calling so if you are failing in your life take responsibility don't say god made me to be small sit down and say why is my life not moving forward this cannot be the will of god for me to keep begging every day as a man moving from pillar to post i am a prayer warrior but in addition i should be blessed to be a blessing genesis 12 verse 2 and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed hallelujah are we together if you get married four months five months your wife refuses to get pregnant don't sit down asking nonsense and say whether that is god's will be fruitful genesis 1 26 be fruitful is his written will the priest that blessed you on behalf of god prophesied to you immediately you should know something is wrong listen obey scripture if you are wrong let god take responsibility are we together
a job that makes you compromise on your spiritual life a job that takes down your prayer life a job that cuts you away from the community of believers that can build you you don't need a vision get out of that job immediately i don't care how much you are being paid what shall it profit a man he's talking profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul i repeat get out of that job get out of that job don't sit down asking should i go pack your load and leave are we together yes you are in a church for instance that is full of manipulation and full of all kinds of things and you see that the character of what is done is not in accordance to scripture there is no integrity there is no godliness there is no feeding of the word of god there is the responsibility of a shepherd as designed by scripture any man who is not doing it is not a shepherd period i will give you pastors after my heart you sit down and you every week everything from you is going you pack your load and get out of that place there is no need praying and say lord should i stay there no are we together the will of god so when i'm praying back to what we are teaching when i'm praying my awareness of the will of god so he's praying father apostle use this lady for example and i just found out that i like her what is wrong with it i'm not saying i'm not saying she's your your your, your, your wife but if god joins two of you we're happy we join you what what that, that's i mean listen god never told ruth boaz is her husband boaz hunger took ruth and naomi they knew they were about to die she went to a field to clean her thing boaz saw her a benevolent man no strings attached all marital processes start with a purified motif that is an expression of who you truly are he said i don't know who this young girl is but leave something for her let her be able to take it back to her mother and god said that's right remember god is looking for those who create the lineage that jesus will be part of so he would not handle anything with laxity because jesus is about to come through that tribe are we together if you come and meet me as a brother and say apostle God is showing me a particular lady. I'll say, let me stand representing what the parents will tell you. Straight up. I'm not even going to waste your time. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Congratulations. Are you a responsible gentleman? Yes. Prove it. There are two kinds of responsibility. There's psychological responsibility where you are getting the mindset that will help you to be serious. Two, there is structural responsibility where now you are beginning to produce fruit. Even if you don't have structural responsibility and you have a mindset that wins based on the word of God, we can stand to say, no, the way you are going, what is in your mind will eventually come. Are you seeing that? But you are not responsible. You are not under authority. You are a careless person. You live your life. Your relationship is like occult. Nobody is going to give you any daughter. At least not, not any of my ladies here. And you ladies, we have created a template to help you. If you like, don't follow a path that God has created for your redemption. And, and follow cunningly devised fables until it lands you in trouble. See, the, the, the house of God is supposed to be a place of guidance. I don't need to go to the Bible to find out whether it's the will of God for me to go back home this night. As soon as service is done and I'm done, I go back home. Why? Going back home subscribes to the law of responsibility. That every good man should have a home and should go back home and sleep at home. Are we together? Even the madman tried to stay in a place. It's the demons that made him restless. He tried. So men who don't stay at home, they are not responsible. It's a revelation. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. 
let's tie up this thing so the permissible will of god please look up please the permissible will of god actions that are within the boundary of righteousness if you have to cheat your brother to increase you cannot say it's the will of god you cannot call that favor if you have to bring people down to rise that is not favor if you have to kill to rise that is not favor if you have to bring two hundred and fifty thousand before you get a job hello that is not favor let me tell you the truth no sir it is not favor knowing what the will of god is so the first dimension of prayer is fellowship and growth the second dimension is obtaining promises and making requests all of these that we have been discussing are still under that thank you thank you so much the revealed will of god the permissible will of god the third dimension of prayer that we we'll discuss very quickly our time is gone is the dimension that makes for decrees and spiritual legislation decrees and spiritual legislation i've taught you three dimensions of prayer number one the dimension for fellowship and growth number two obtaining promises obtaining promises and i told you that to obtain promises you must number one have a heart that is selfless number two you must ensure that your request is within the boundary of the will of god then you can ask confidently this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in his name he heareth us are we together and then number three the dimension of decrease and spiritual legislation now please pay attention this is the dimension of prayer that does not so much deal with talking to god this is the dimension of prayer that deals with rearranging realities based on the word of god please understand this is the dimension of prayer that is concerned with not only talking to god but talking to things talking to circumstances talking to time talking to demons talking to elements of creation to line up with the will of god that's why i took out time to talk to you about the will of god because if you do not know the will of god and the provisions of scripture decree and spiritual legislation will not be possible with you what then do we say to these things i know what god has made for me i know what god says should be in my life this is also the realm of prayer where words listen now become like arrows in a man's quiver words are instruments of creation the following scripture ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 please write down these scriptures these are the scriptures that we must have in our minds when we want to engage prayer as a system for making decrees and legislating spiritual realities ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 the a part says where the word of a king is talk to me there is power where the word of a king is and then revelation chapter 5 verse 10 just write it don't give us media just write it down the bible says we have been made unto our god kings and priests or a kingdom of priests and we shall reign not in heaven in the earth so i know under god that in christ my words are not ordinary 
my words are powerful please listen everybody overflow one two three online listen carefully this part of this teaching concerns you seriously number two proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 i'm giving you a few scriptures that guide you when making decrees and establishing realities in the spirit proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 death and life help us media we have to rush are in the power of the tongue death and life are not in the nozzle of a gun death and life are not in the stone of a catapult death and life are not in the edge of the sword the bible says they are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof i use words to program life i use words to program death i can program life over territories i can program death over territories number three job chapter 22 and 28 popular scripture write it down please job 22 28 thou shall also decree everybody say decree to decree means to pass as law thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody unto the one that decreed it thou shalt decree a thing Thou shalt decree life. Thou shalt decree increase. Thou shalt decree victory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has already brought them as the redeemed. Let them say so. Are we together? The word of a king. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon your ways. Number three. Isaiah... 43 and verse 26 isaiah 43 and verse 26 read it please ready one two read put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou that thou might test be in other words bail yourself out of that situation Bail yourself. Declare yourself acquitted. Come out of that situation by making decrees in prayer. This family, nobody rises. In the name of Jesus, I decree, I declare that the horns that keep men down, I am exempted. The Bible says you are, you are already breaking the chains. You are, you are exempting yourself. Listen, let me tell you if you do not declare to be justified then whatever you see you take it like that scripture declare thou declare what declare thou health declare thou long life declare thou prosperity declare thou increase this is not just some name it claim it thing it's a it's an ordinance of the kingdom it is how we function in this kingdom God is called in Genesis 1, 2, 3, the talking spirit. The spirit that moves by talking. Listen, please do not ever get to a point in your life where making decrees with understanding looks like a basic spiritual thing. You are silent, your destiny is silent. You are silent, every door remains closed. Declare thou that thou mightest be justified. I declare over my life. Sometimes I stand in front of the mirror and I speak. Joshua Selma, you will never go down. You go up and up and up. The light of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon you. It's not every time that I pray that I'm praying for you. There are times I'm praying for myself too. There are times I'm praying for my own destiny. Even when I pray for you, I pray with intelligence. I know what the word of God says. Father, this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I declare your people are prospering. They are understanding. Their minds are enlarged. Listen, it's not every time you talk to God. No. There are times that you stand like Ezekiel and speak to the bones. Ka 
can these bones live? Only thou knowest. And he says, prophesy. Prophesy. He spoke to the bones and there was a sound. And it came. And all the bones came together, but there was no life. And he says, son of man. He says, prophesy to the four winds. And say, thou wind, breathe upon this lane. And the breath entered them and they became an exceeding great army. Isaiah 41, 21. The Lord showed me this scripture in 2004. And it changed my life. One, two, please read. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. This is like a law court. And you are bringing the basis for why such and such and such should happen to you. Why should I lift your family? Why should I promote you? Bring forth your strong reasons. See, let me tell you this. Many people are prayerful, but they are wordless. Is why the prayer is not effective. We pray in tongues. Important. We pray to God and we ask prayers. But most of our prayers are outside of the jurisdiction and the methodologies of the word. It is important. See, this is the missing link. This is where the disciples missed it. They were praying amiss. You can be prayerful and not get results because you are praying amiss. Fortified by the word. The first dimension of Jesus' growth as revealed in scripture is getting the word first then we see him praying we did not have the opportunity to hear what he was saying in his 40 days prayer but at least we heard what he said in gethsemane so we know that his prayer was consistent with scripture if it be thy will produce your strong reasons listen believers your prayer life is going to be rich in this end time to the degree to which you understand these dimensions as i approach the throne of grace to pray i know that my prayer life is not all about petitions there is a dimension of it that is tailored for fellowship let me tell you this many times the determinant of what dimension you switch to is often the holy ghost there are times you go with your heart heavy but there are times that he chooses what dimension to be expressed in prayer there are times you go to prayer wanting to decree and bind and cast and god wants koinonia fellowship are we together don't resist it i'm saying this because many prayer warriors have missed it here there are times you go to god and he does he just wants you to be still in his presence and you are just praying in tongues and his power is just upon you and you feel that you are not praying because you are not dissipating energy to be heard by another person whereas there is communion the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the koinonia the fellowship the sharing the participation and under those kinds of most times when god switches to that dimension what is happening to you is impartation most impartations happen through that time of fellowship it is not the binding and casting in that stillness you are about to go for a ministration and you are praying and you are just soaking and for hours all you are doing is lying down there like a dead man thirty minutes one hour and that anointing is on you waves and waves and waves of the glory you stand up from that encounter and go for your ministration and you will see the demonstration of the power and the spirit you will see great grace you will operate in the fullness of the grace that god allocated you ask those who know me when you see me praying and preparing for koinonia especially for miracle service you can be in the living room and you will not hear me sometimes when i'm alone just like that i can be walking around for a long time just walking around next thing i carry a paper i'm writing god is speaking to me 
I'm walking. Sometimes God is opening my eyes and I'm seeing the things that he's going to be doing. I'm writing. And God is revealing things. See, let me tell you something. I'm not saying it's in the Bible. But it's something that has helped my prayer life. Try praying in the night. Minimize light. Many times when you pray in the night, you need darkness to see light. It's a mystery that only prayerful people understand. Help that person running out here. I have prayed most effective in an atmosphere where my eyes can see very few things. You hear God. The distractions are minimal. You are not looking and checking and then seeing your phone beep and say, ah, maybe it's the alert that has come. These things are distracting. God is speaking destiny things to you. You need your attention. I love praying in the night. Of the lights. You may just have red lights here, flashing green light. It's enough for your eyes to see. Use your, your phone. That's why, you know, some of us who just gave our lives to Christ now, thank God for you, but you see, we had a privilege of praying well because many times we prayed outside and we prayed in the night. When God gives you money and you build a good house, build a beautiful garden, so not for visitors, for meeting with God. Go back to the Garden of Eden. A beautiful place. Shataba kataba lataba. Shekete pretekete beta. And you are praying. You are praying. Fellowship. Son, you have done well. It's time to move to the next level. Do it this way. Do it this way. Change this. Change that. Yes, Lord. You are praying. Sometimes it is God that introduces your petitions, not you. Okay, you were talking to me about the issue of finance for the ministry. Um, let me tell you what you will do. I am going to inspire you and a book is going to come. The name of the book is maybe whatever it is. And as you write this book, my hand will come upon it and it will go to the ends of the earth. Yes, Lord. You have received the blueprint. You will write a book that does not make sense. And it will bring results that don't make sense. Because you discuss with God in the secret place. Look at how God came to Abraham. Study, God's, study Abraham's prayer life. It was full of fellowship. And then there are times that you carry a burden and you go to God sincerely. Lord, we need to talk. There are things we need to talk about. See, let me tell you this. Do not be afraid to come to God with your needs. Do not feel less spiritual. The truth is that God wants your joy to be full. Bring the school fees issue. Bring the, your brother issue. Bring the salvation issue. Bring it before him. Lord, why am I still going back to my village in my dreams? I thought I was free. Come before him. He's your father. This attack that I thought left me, this thing that I thought I'd, breaking, I'd broken free from one year, two years ago, why is it coming back to my life? You can come to God in prayer. Lord, why is it that when I'm blessed, I'm only blessed for three weeks, one week, I go back to look like my past. Something is wrong. You can pray. You can go to the God who answers prayers. And then there are times, my brothers and my sisters, where you obtain grace from God, but you need to stand. Can I tell you this? Most of the victory of a believer, listen carefully, will come through dimension one and dimension three. When you do one and three effectively, you will have little of petitions to bring spare me two three minutes we'll wrap up with rules of engagement i will show you some of the do's and don'ts in prayers decrees are powerful my day i speak to you I command my morning, I command my afternoon. 
I command my evening, hear the word of the Lord. Line up according to God's word. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. It's not the devil that made it. If God made my day, let it look good. Because anything God makes, it is good. This is how you pray. Everything God made, it is good. I remove accidents from my day. I remove trouble from my day. I decree and declare. It is well with me. I decree and declare. Favor comes to me. You get into your shop. You don't sit down and start calling and say, I'm now here. No. You lock your door. I decree and declare. Even if it's in two minutes. I declare that favor comes today. By the power of the Holy Spirit. My products are a delight to many. They are coming by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Recently, God introduced a very great friend to my life. Wonderful man. Extremely wealthy man. Very, very extremely wealthy. Um, I'll not mention the name. But then we're having a meeting with the man and then he spoke to me and he said, Apostle, let me tell you, before my workers start, seven, he's a billionaire, seven a.m. in the morning, we all pray. We have fasting sessions and we pray. We declare to God that we have no wisdom on our own. I say, are you not blessed now? Away with that nonsense that when you pray your business, you, you involve God. Uh, you are not being social. Go to Dubai. Go to the Gulf nations. And see how these people take their idols and take it. They teach it as part of the ways to succeed. They teach you to do your yoga. They teach you to do your transcendental meditation. They believe that if not for anything, it relaxes the mind. Only believers who are ashamed and afraid of God. I'm not saying to go and be praying during office hours. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that you need to involve God in your life unashamedly. Listen, if you are here and you are in business, I'm teaching you this as God grants you grace. Even if your business partner is an unbeliever, you may not just shout and pray, but even if it's under your breath, Lord, this is the day. I bless the bread I'm making. I bless my shop. I bless this. I decree and declare. And you will see how your day will look like. Lord, every troublemaker is far from all that I do. For the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Recently, I had, I had the story of a, a gentleman. This is true. A gentleman who was just sitting down and he got an alert of over eight zeros. And two days later, a prominent institution in this country just called him and they said they are going to come and carry you to the court we are associating you to a fraud case and he said what is all this did you receive so 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 alert yes sir remain silent until you come there true story alert came to my destiny do you know what the account the money was to be transferred to i don't know how that happened it eventually found its way to his account most evil you think that is breakthrough that guy is in trouble because of that thing he may not get visas to travel again it is not breakthrough you want to transfer money corrupt money quickly to somebody's account then it's my own account no the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous when i had that thing i prayed for myself because people bless me all the time I prayed for myself lord let nobody carry stolen money in this country so that they will now put on newspaper expose apostle joshua selman is involved with somebody's money shout no way listen i'm telling you that if you do not decree and you live your life barren you can receive 100 million in your church one year later you are in prison everything that is evil and would destroy you may god keep it far from your life but it will not just happen just by talking listen you are the priest of your destiny you are the prophet of your destiny i will continue speaking over your life but you must learn to speak speak as believers we approach life from the standpoint of victory 
remember that our decree is to establish hallelujah let me just give you two rules of engagement i've said it but our time is up number one rules of engagement prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of god and the victory of christ jesus rules of engagement in the prayer ministry number one prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of god and the victory of christ jesus prayer must be approached from two standpoints number one the love of god the awareness of the love of god the fatherhood of god that once i am within the will of god god is not withholding anything to, so it gives me the confidence to approach him and then number two the victory please this is important listen to me believers whether it is warfare or spiritual decrees and legislature you are already a vict a victim if you do not realize that you are standing upon the victory and the liberty of christ that is the basis from which we approach prayer we do not approach prayer to win we approach prayer to establish realities that have already been wrought in the christ the bible says in ephesians 1 and when you read from verse 3 that god has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places listen to me so whether we pray and say i command that cause to leave you are not necessarily listen to me you are taking advantage of the victory that christ has wrought and you are now superimposing it upon the rebellion of darkness rules of engagement david already won before he met goliath but he still fought david already won before his covenant already killed goliath but he stood before goliath to establish it that's why he said goliath i'm i'm here to bring down your head give it to the bird he's finished hallelujah from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but your sins was not atoned for by casting it out jesus came and died his dying was not negating what he did in prophecy his dying was giving it expression so i believe in warfare I believe in casting out demons but my approach is from the standpoint of victory are we together now please take it down let me sing one song we're preparing to to wrap up um what's that darling jackson every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen to me listen koinonia you must approach life like one who has won you must approach life like life owes you because you are victorious now thanks be to god who always causes us he's already doing thanksgiving thanks be to god i never approach life to win i approach life to establish victory i never cast out devils um as 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 the basis of victory i cast them out because the bible tells me i already have authority this is very important it looks like it's a little issue but it's a big deal in the realm of the spirit listen you are already blessed that's why you prosper you prosper to give evidence to the blessing prosperity is manifesting the blessing on you you are blessed with wisdom you are blessed with relationships you are blessed with favor you are blessed with divine direction these are true riches when you engage them and they produce prosperity 
it is not when money comes to you that you are blessed money comes as a receipt that it is true you are blessed are we together the awareness you own the universe you own yeah. everyone on earth you own that's my father the universe listen do you know why I approach prayer this way I don't approach prayer hoping that God will answer me no I don't approach if it is not the will of God I don't even pray it if I'm confused I inquire in prayer and the spirit of revelation will come and open up scripture and bring the voice of God I only pray when I'm sure of the will of God if I am not sure I pray to know the will of God then knowing the will of God I pray to establish it listen when you know this your prayer becomes rich because every time I catch you praying you should be doing one or more all of the following fellowship or obtaining promises in the spirit or establishing reality whether you are interceding for souls whether you are speaking over territories it comes under spiritual legislation that way you are walking in dominion this is what prayer was designed for we are doing many things today that prayer was not designed for it is the reason why we do not get results your prayer life cannot go down when you see the necessity of prayer you know that without prayer my fellowship will be bankrupt without prayer i cannot obtain promises and without prayer i cannot create a climate of the word of god in my life when do we pray all the time anytime anytime is right for prayer anytime is right for prayer you can be buffing and making decrees my day is blessed in the name of jesus any time may not be conducive for the study of the word because you need the bible you need materials you need time but any time is conducive for prayer i may excuse you for not reading your bible today but i will not excuse you for praying you will need time to settle down and really read and meditate but you don't need any time including when you turn to the other side on your bed you can train your spirit man listen if you are not filled with the holy ghost here with evidence of speaking in tongues it doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe about it there is a dimension of the priesthood of the saints that you may never come into in that rent challenge it's a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I, uh. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see 
Hagar was banished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to how to the house of God because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have you have ordained a place that when we meet you will show us a way when God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things it's not just a ritual there is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained that every time you come before God he must open a way so don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say I went to every church I don't know what the church you went to believe but in this sanctuary there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting God for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting God for one thing or the other I'd like you to believe there is a way in the sea I bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the Bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth. Testifiers of his faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh, is the Lord. Oh, is the Lord. Listen. It is our confidence in God 
and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of God and access to the ways of God we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know God by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries Ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard Paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of God which is given me to you word for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did Paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis he may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the Red Sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that God in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight I bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something God can do about your finances there's something God can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the Red Sea parts and God will rubbish Pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful Lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace grant me the grace hallelujah just pray one prayer lord change my story 
visit me tonight lift your voice and pray pray with faith change my story visit me visit me tonight hallelujah tonight is an unusual service because time has gone we're going to be very very fast very very fast at that um, like I told us we're going to start praying for the sick we'll start by praying for the sick and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service. It's not just limited to healing, but we're going to pray for the sick now. Now, we're going to do this very fast. And um, please, those that will be ministering, let's, let's do it very fast. It's not in how long... Listen, let me tell you something about the anointing. It's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency. Just a touch is enough for the anointing. The same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um, when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of God will touch it there too hallelujah praise the Lord please I like you to be very intentional I know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time I have seen the power and the glory of God um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember I told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when I do that um, we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the Lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power Lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and Lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of Jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of God who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of Jesus Christ praise the Lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if I were you I'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick God bless
deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. And the honor. Yes, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. Yes, there is no one else. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and words as we praise.
we say, let every other name. Jesus, take your place.
and say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season in the name of Jesus set Every stumble shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Papo Sabalaka to Pashabren Legadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life, upon my family, and destroy every planting that is not of God. Lift your voice and pray. Let your fire, the visitation of your fire, the visitation of your fire upon my life, upon my life. Pray. Let your fire fall upon my life. Let your fire bring a separation. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What seest thou? He said, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. Lift your hands. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three i release that fire now i release that fire now i release that fire now by the anointing of the holy ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah, i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I declare be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Overflow one. I'm seeing three people. I'm praying now. I know because of time we can't let you come in. But I'm seeing three people. Two are ladies. One is a gentleman. This prayer is for you. There is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside. The Lord is bringing massive deliverance. Barrenness is a dangerous thing. Listen, whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow. It cannot multiply. Jesus saw the fig tree. It was taken from the earth. Taken from the earth, but it was not producing. In the name of Jesus, I'm still praying that prayer again. That any life here that Satan has rendered barren, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare, be delivered right now. Be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness. Hallelujah. Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like, it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh. I didn't, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is, you are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from, uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Cross, yeah? Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. To truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. You heard what I'm saying? This running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord himself, he will give you an anointing, but he will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing, a new dimension, a new season. My dear, there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stir up that spirit, that dimension. I open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy where are they i stretch my hands right now 11 people 11 people scattered inside and outside in the name that is above all names receive that spirit you need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy. Some of you, you have only had dreams. Only dreams, but I shift you to dimensions of visions. Prophetic visions. You will never be the same. I'm still praying this. I'm still praying this. There are people, this is your call. But no anointing has ever stirred it. In the name of Jesus, I shift you in the spirit. Into that anointing. The very anointing. The seat of the prophetic. I move you by grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. I activate it. I activate it. That dimension. I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold. I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Abaraka toka 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 ta. Shabenda salaba seketa subria katali katosh. Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now I stretch my hands from the front to the back. Overflow one, two, three, the roadside and online. If there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection, right now in the name of Jesus, in this silence, may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance. Right now, I'm praying, it's happening right now. Taking away that spirit from your life. Please be sensitive, we are doing a quick walk. Rejection, rejection, rejection. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Rejection. I command that spirit to leave. I'm still praying. I command that spirit to leave. I command that spirit to leave. Alongside with this, there are people. Bad luck. Good things must always turn to evil when it, hold, when it enters your hand. No matter what it is. If they give you money, something must go bad. A good opportunity it must be destroyed. You enter a relationship, something must happen. I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. Makos Kabara Katosh Kele Katosiata. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege, here at this miracle service, fire, 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 fire. I release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back, inside, outside. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name, every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
delay. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This come. This your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris. Doris. Who is Doris? I'm hearing a name Doris. Doris. Are you Doris? Your name is Doris. I'm going to pray for you. Your name too is Doris. That's your baby. I will pray for you. Look at me. Look at me. Shout Jesus. Yeah, look at me. Witchcraft. I'm stretched. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you. I stretch my hands and I declare. I'm seeing an altar catching fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it by the Spirit. I stretch my hands. That's what the Lord is saying I should do. I stretch my hands. It catches fire now. Oh. oh, oh. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach is taken from my life. Is taken from my life forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so. Your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that come? Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen. By the spirit of the living God I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days let there be a miracle let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ why are you all coming your parents 
no, no. I, if, if I pray, most of you is not is not that word. You are just coming just because you want. It may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see. Let me let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch. You see this touch. Just this touch. You see there is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me is what makes this touch different. You see that? You can, you can have... It's not just a touch, maybe a touch for Jamboree. No, 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 no. You can, I can lay my hands on you, right? And then something can come upon you. I can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change. Sometimes you see me just speak. And you think it as as I pray like this, you see, watch your life and see what it becomes. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? That's 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 the point. The word of God that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you. When it rests on you, like a hen over her, her the eggs, it will stay there until there is a performance. This thing you see is not just power, it's authority. It's authority. There is authority in the spirit. It's not just power, it's authority. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying now? So it is, it is a grace, it's a gift that God can give a man. He said, for I am a man under authority. I say to one, go. It's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching. I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone, let me tell you, whether you are inside or outside, your life will never, never be the same. If I never get to touch you, it's just that we are carnal. We are carnal. So we just feel that until you make contact with the man of God, your life will not. No, 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 no. I don't have to give you a word of knowledge. The anointing that you see, this anointing, through words, through words, I can speak to you like this. The word of God carries the anointing. Do you understand? It's not just until maybe you... you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of God as I'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all I do here is to just come and speak I told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the Lord is saying I should tell you what happened to Queen Esther in the Bible will happen to you I don't know who you are but the Lord is saying I should tell you that what happened to Adasa, Queen Esther in the Bible I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ so brothers and sisters I like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for I lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the Lord is showing me something help is coming I'm seeing help is coming that's what the Spirit of God is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when God says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming I'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is saying I should prophesy to someone it won't read June it won't read June this is what God is saying I don't even know what I'm saying listen God gave you a word God is saying you will not enter June without that miracle happening and in the name of Jesus Christ whoever that person is I release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a performance I'm seeing I'm seeing a young man that came here 
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing mm -mm, i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentleman it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you. You see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing by the power of the holy spirit the lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing i stretch my hands now by the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, may that anointing be so lavish upon your life. You will see strange testimonies as you agree with people. They will note you, they will note you for commanding results through prayer. Hallelujah. Let's pray for finances. Just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of Jesus Christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh? in the name of Jesus that grace I called him because the Lord said I should minister to him that anointing is upon him I'm still praying there are people I'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit. This is, this is it, like a token of that grace, that call. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray now. Everywhere in this congregation and outside, if you are called into this ministry, I declare, Skopa Shalanda Sagateko Shalad. You may not look like it, but I release the grace on you. May the Lord align your understanding about finances. May he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance. I declare that as a result of this prayer, God will connect you to strategic individuals. Strategic individuals. Hallelujah. There are people here who have Please listen, we're rounding up. There are people here inside, outside. 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah them i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barren you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself please help them Eleven years, no child. Madam, how long? Seven years. Seven years. Yes. Eighteen years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam? Eighteen years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. Yes. You. Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi, at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been married too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, is someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child, you were even rejoicing, and you had a miscarriage. Yes. When? Last year. Last year. Yes. And from that time, this has affected you. Yes, I have to pray. There's something wrong with your stomach. Yes. The doctor already told you. I wouldn't say it in the open, but then this is what is killing the baby. Hold on, madam. Um, you had miscarriage, not even in tw in 2000 and. In 2014, child, uh, that's what I'm saying. You had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes. because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach. Yes. The baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach. Yes, sir. God is going to give you a child. Amen. 
My dear, look at me, this lady. The mercy of God needs to speak for you. You, you love Jesus? You love Jesus? I'll pray for you. But you are not in need of child. What you need is mercy. The mercy of God. Many of us don't know what the mercy of God is. The mercy of God is not for sinners. The mercy of God is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you. So when we say mercy, it's not just because you have to be a sinner. There are certain dimensions of God that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. I want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for. I, I love men. I respect husbands. But many husbands don't love Jesus. They don't know Jesus. After their wives return like this and say, my husband, we just went for a program. They don't have what program. And they cancel out all of these things. It takes two to agree. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, madam, put your hand in your stomach. I take away this demonic thing. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus, it disappears, madam. I pray for you. The Lord opens your womb. In the name of Jesus, madam, by the grace of God, you carry your child. In the name of Jesus Christ, I remove every growth from your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you return with your miracle. Madam, look at me. God is going to use you. Amen. You are not just going to give birth to a child. The hand of God is on your life. It doesn't look like it. But there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God. You will love God and serve Him. And with this miracle God is going to give you, every other woman you pray for over the issue of the fruit of the womb, you will see that God will open up your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you will arise and have mercy upon this, my precious sister. In the name of Jesus, the voice of accusation that speaks against you, I silence it by the mystery of the blood. Now go and have your child. It's over in the name of Jesus Christ. It's over, my dear. Look at me. Go and prepare. You will have a child now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let the grace of God speak for you. Madam, I pray for you. Help her, please. It's over right now. Carry your child in Jesus' name. Please stretch your hands towards the altar and let's pray. Stretch your hands in one minute. You, for yourself, madam. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's all right, madam. No problem. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Um, you are trusting God for a child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's sister is going to have twins. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The power of God will come on that person now as I'm speaking. For the sake of your sister, carrying twins. This is twins, the Lord himself. Hmm. There's one more person left. I'm hearing the voice of children, babies crying. When it stops, then I know that it's over. I'm still, hold on. I'm still hearing it. There is still one more person, family. I'm like, I'm hearing the voice of children. Lord, in the name of Jesus, wherever that family is, I pray that you locate them right now. By the spirit of the living God, you locate them right now. You locate them right now. I'm still praying. You locate them right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Stretch your hands and let's pray. Please begin to pray in one minute and say, Father, whatever I have dropped here, just keep her there. I'll pray for her. That's all right. Begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony. In the name of Jesus, I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you. Jalakato prakato zeze me akashi anakatos Ende leketo sabragato siyatakato shafranda hasiyana baladash Impossible situations 
Mabrakatoza dia shana hasana malakatosh. Rekete kete kebara hasosia. Embrakato shala barakatos kade brende kete kalatosiata. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Mabreza gado shane kelando safria hasabadash. Ingre doze de kosha barakatos ki adabalash. Please pray. Lord, turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let them say among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. We sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy. Lord, I bow my knees to you and I cry, visit your people. 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 Sheketo kato sana malikatosh, embra kato skala baro sabaria katash. Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there and the amazing testimonies this for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before god through your request and i decree and declare as i stand and step upon this request I declare, rise above every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same way I'm stepping on this, in the name of Jesus, that is how you are stepping on every situation. I turn every request in this place into your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of jesus christ every impossible situation represented here i cry to the god who is the god of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of Jesus Christ, the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their requests in the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let there be miracles. In Jesus' name. Please lift your hands, everyone. Let me pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. You see, every ministry, let me tell you this, it's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um, your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes i have seen the grace and the glory of god and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have worked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you have handled some level of finances before but I shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ you have experienced favor before but I stand here in the name of Jesus and I declare a new order of favor you have had God before but I program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of God. I pray for everyone here inside and outside the mantle that causes men to be honorable may that grace come upon you may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ listen this ministry has never gone up and come down never not once it keeps going from glory to glory I declare let that be the definition of your life from today spiritually financially academically for those who are students I decree and declare the grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you the grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you anyone here trusting God for a job a noble job I stretch my hands between now and next miracle service return with your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ and anyone here due for promotion I decree and declare by the finger of God step into a new dimension of promotion the fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen i pray for you in the name of jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you i found the calls of your prayer life i found the calls of your spiritual life I find the calls of your word life. This is a prayer many people don't desire. I pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. I say it again, a baptism of spiritual hunger. That the Lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things every kind of arrival mentality every kind of spiritual complacency where there is no imp there is no desire to press for the deeper things of god satisfied by the little results here and there i declare that the lord plants a fresh hunger the hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of Jesus Christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray I pray for you now in the name of Jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food I cause it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you in this strange season where God is lifting men and changing their stories as I'm praying for you I'm praying this one for myself too in the name of Jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of God in the name of Jesus Christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle 
if you will lead me to Jesus I'm not too proud I'm not a rebel I can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of God here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to Jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a Christian background a number of you love Jesus Christ but you are saying man of God I have never truly made a commitment for Jesus I have I've seen people do all this but tonight I want to make that decision some of you are saying man of God I love Jesus but I need a renewal in my life I just need a fresh touch I know that my life is not the way it used to be and I want to straighten out my ways with God if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three I'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here I want you to come out right where I am here wherever you are God bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are Jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight god bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles god bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and god make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up Let's clear the way for them. God bless you. God bless you as you come. Quickly. God bless you as you come. You need Jesus. Please don't come out here to pretend. Come out genuinely from your heart. You must be born again. Every single one of us had to pass through that process. Jesus said, I am the door, not a door. The door, the door, the only door. Every other route is, a, is, is, is not correct. You have to follow through the door. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out to make this declaration. I want you to know that this is a very noble declaration. Lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully. Say, Lord Jesus. If you're joining them, please come quickly. Join them. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you. Say it again. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. That you died for me. You shed your blood for my sin. Tonight, I receive you. I receive your life. I, as, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. In the name of Jesus, I move forward ever and backward never. The grace to stay, the grace to grow, the grace to be useful is mine tonight in jesus name lord jesus i stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you i pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the power of sin the power of satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I appreciate you. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you, just follow him in concert. There will be a group of people to just talk to you, address you very quickly, and then you will be back to your seat. Let's appreciate the Lord for tonight. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony.
testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain